We are here today in New York during Climate Week and the UN General Assembly, coming together with CEOs and executives from all walks of life to hear directly from them on how they can help to create sustainable impact through their businesses. Odukumpu, an organization with 8,500 professionals in nearly 30 countries, is supporting its customers with a 75% lower carbon footprint than the global industry average. Good morning. Hi. Paul Bieben. I'm Tamara. Very pleased to Tamara, meet you. Tamara, nice to meet you. Hi, Heidi Bethana. Nice to meet you. Heidi, nice to meet you as well. well let's, let's take a walk. Speaking with Tamara Weiner, president of Business Line Americas, and Heidi Peltonen, vice president of sustainability, we're going to learn how the organization is aiming to reduce its carbon intensity by 42% by 2030 and help accelerate the global green transition. So you both have come a long way to be here. A, a bit longer, bit longer than mine. I come from Alabama and Heidi comes over from Finland. You sound like a native Alabama. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that come to be? You're German. I am German, okay. working for a Finnish company. And in 2020, the boss asked me, Tamara, how would you feel about moving to Alabama? And of course I said, it was always my dream. And I, oh. <laughs> Wonderful. And Heidi, have you had a chance to see New York at all? Yes, absolutely. Two hours every day, maybe. Uh, I really loved walking the High Line with all the pretty flowers, absolutely. amazing scenery. And there is so many places here that I'd love to see. So is this your company's first visit to Climate Week? Yes, we are here for the first time. Uh, we believe companies play a crucial role in accelerating the Korean transition. And we have to be part of the global discussion to mitigate climate change and keep the Paris Agreement alive. Absolutely. And I think also we don't speak enough about stainless steel. It's such a huge part of the global economy. Exactly. Circularity, etc. It's a fabulous product. Can you tell us about how O2 Kompu is supporting the growing global demand for steel while maintaining its leadership position as a low emission steel producer and also contributing to overall global decarbonization efforts? Otokumpu, without any doubt, is the global leader when it comes to sustainable stainless steel. Our footprint in CO2 emissions is 75% lower than the industry average globally, which is absolutely fantastic. That is remarkable. Yes. Um, on the other hand, steel, both carbon and stainless steel together, accounts for 10% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So we are part of the problem and we recognize this, but we're also part of the solution. For everything that's ongoing, you think about hydrogen, you think about EVs, modern construction material, you do need stainless steel, which is sustainable. Um, the, the electrification of society, if we think about uh, the, the transformation on energy, it needs sustainable stainless steel. As much as we need, as a stainless steel producer, we need affordable and green energy at the same time. So you can see it, it really works in partnerships. It's along the whole value chain that we try to cooperate and find these solutions which are so urgently needed. And, and Tamara, can you tell us about Odukumpu's business model based on the circular economy, which I think you just alluded to, and its impact on sustainability? I may be a bit biased, but stainless steel is a, is a fabulous product. And it is, I think, a prime example for circularity. Um, we have a, a content in raw material which is around 90% recycled. So we really start with a pile of scrap which would otherwise be in the landfill. Wow. Last year we even managed 95% of recycled content. So we really make out of scrap, we make new stainless steel. I don't think most people know that no. stainless steel is almost entirely recycled. Yes, 95% last year. It was really fantastic, one of the best results we ever had. At the same time, everything we produce, I can remelt to 100%. I just take it, remelt it, and can reuse it again and again. So it's really a prime example for circularity and what is needed. It's absolutely, it's really absolutely fabulous. For the remaining 5 to 10%, we do also, of course, need access, um, secure access to the raw materials with a low carbon footprint. That in today's environment sometimes can be, can be challenging. Um, what we do see is that initiatives like the Inflation Reduction Act or the Infrastructure Bill, which demand clean material, are really helpful in this transformation. So we're very grateful here for the government for having these initiatives. They're really helpful to us. Heidi, can you tell us which goals, which of the sustainable development goals are priorities for Otukompu and going forward into 2030, how this aligns with the Paris Agreement? We believe companies play a pivotal role in a Korean transition. And actually the whole purpose of sustainable development goals in the beginning was to really uh, build a foundation for companies to drive action 
Uh, Otokumpu contributes to seven uh, sustainable development goals in total, everything from affordable clean energy to partnership for actions. Uh, but at the very heart of our business is definitely climate action. Uh, we are one of the hard to abate sectors. We represent significant uh, emission intensity. And for us, that means that we have a target to keep, keep global warming below 1.5 degrees based on the Paris Agreement. That means that we target to reduce our emissions by 42 percent by 2030. Wow. And for us, it's not just about what we do as a company, what is our direct impact, but we also take the whole supply chain with us and drive action with, together with our suppliers. We also really need forerunner customers such as Alfa Laval and Siemens, who are also present here at the Climate Week uh, this week, to, to together with us drive green transition forward across industries beyond the stainless steel industry. This, this is for both of you, and it, it's no secret, we live in a time of rising geopolitical tensions, and that's gonna impact how you do business, how everybody does business. So really, I'd love to know how do you, how do you navigate these complicated times and stay on target for your sustainability goals? That is not always easy. It's a global problem, climate change, but it needs a global solution as well. And as you said, in today's environment, that is not so easy to achieve. So, so that is definitely a, a, a daily struggle to see how, how, do we get, how do we get to this point. It's, it's not an answer to move industries like ours out of certain areas, so out of Europe or out of the US, um, because our footprint in CO2 is 75% lower than the industry average. So if we, were not to, if we were not producing here, but we were to produce somewhere else, it, the problem would get worse, it wouldn't get better. And I think Europe and the US both have understood that. In the US, the aspect of national security comes in as well. Um, and so I think there's a very good understanding that moving industries out into places which have laxer rules is not the solution. I personally, I really like the approach which the US has proposed to, to Europe about with the global arrangement, because it addresses not only decarbonization, it also addresses non-market capacity or excess capacity, which is a huge issue as some countries, mainly China, has built up so much capacity. Right, right. And it's not as if you can pick up and move a steel mill overnight to respond to the changing yeah. global environment. Once you're there, you're there forever. You're there. Yeah. Absolutely. And if we look at uh, the global alignment needed, the topics what we're especially looking into is we need to accelerate both private as well as public investments and really see green transition as a long term investment. It will secure decades for the businesses. It will be licensed to operate for companies to decarbonize their operations and the supply chain that they're working in. At the same time, uh, for Otokumpu, carbon pricing is a pivotal instrument that we need to be in place. It is already existing in European level, it's existing in, in several countries, but how do we find a global agreement on carbon pricing to really incentivize companies to invest into clean uh, technologies and, and clean energy? And last, uh, but definitely not least, I mentioned earlier the foreigner customers we need. We also need to scale the demand for green materials, for low emission uh, materials, and find regulation that supports accelerating that demand. So what you're really talking about there is scope one, two, and three emissions. That's something difficult to get your arms around, but that's what you're trying to do. Absolutely, and this is the commitment we made in 2021 to really look across the supply chain. 70% of our emissions come from our supply chain, and that is a significant impact to our business. Right, so it's out, not necessarily outside of your control, but more difficult for you to rein in. Definitely, definitely, and that's why we need the partnerships. That's why we have Partnership for Action, one of the sustainable development goals. Heidi, looking forward into the future, how does Otukumpu plan to continue to sort of position itself as a global leader, both in the steel industry, but outside the industry as well? We definitely keep uh, accelerating green transition across the value chain uh, that all the Kumpu is operating at. We aim to the 42% uh, emission intensity reduction by 2030 and beyond towards carbon neutrality. Uh, at the same time, we need ambitious, robust, long-term climate regulation that supports companies to really drive this transition forward. And we believe also being here at the UNGA and the Climate Week, it's a perfect opportunity to also position how pivotal stainless steel 
is in combating the biggest challenge of our time, which is climate change. Well, thank you. That was terrific. Is there anything else you want to cover with us? I think we said the most important thing. Stainless steel is a fabulous material, very much part of the changes that need to happen to control climate change. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Otokumpu is a global leader in stainless steel production, but more importantly, in sustainable stainless steel production with a carbon footprint that is 75% lower than the industry average. With its first visit here to Climate Week in New York, the company is highlighting not only its own efforts at sustainability, but pushing the industry forward for such a critical component of the global economy.